Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, how's it going? So, let's address some of the feedback that I got from my last video because I got quite a lot of interesting feedback from the video that I made just there talking about the robbery that took place this past weekend between Kubrat Pulev and Derek Chisora in the heavyweight division. Let's talk about it. So the fight was a couple of days ago now, this is Monday afternoon and one of the things that I've been waiting for and looking out for, which I haven't really seen yet is I'm waiting for an outrage. Where is the outrage? You know, where are the, you're taking food off his kid's table. This is a disgrace. We need to call the police. We need a federal investigation into boxing. Where are those guys at? You know, where, where are those guys? I'm, I'm waiting for them and I don't see them anywhere. <laughs> I mean... According to you guys, what I've been hearing is that when a guy gets a hometown decision in boxing, that's the most deplorable, disgraceful, despicable thing that can possibly happen in the sport. So, where is the outrage? I mean, I mean, I'm I'm waiting for somebody to come forward and 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 show me where the outrage mob is because I don't see them anywhere. I mean, has anybody contacted Derek Chisora's mum yet to tell her that they're going to slit her throat? I mean, apparently, according to you guys, that's the logical and rational and virtuous thing to do when somebody gets what what is perceived to be a hometown decision. Apparently, you're supposed to contact all their immediate family and tell them that you're going to slit their throat, that, that you're going to do them in, this, that, and the other. You know, has, has anybody got Derek Chisora's daughter's number? Are, are you going to give her a call and tell her what you're going to do? I mean, I mean, apparently, from what I hear, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, apparently, when somebody in British boxing gets a hometown decision that you don't agree with, apparently, attacking their immediate family and um, har hounding and harassing them every single minute of the day is apparently the virtuous thing to do. And um, apparently, the police are supposed to be called... And everybody's supposed to be outraged. You know, the judges are supposed to be reprimanded and banned for life. And there's supposed to be this massive um, virtue signaling, look at us, we're so, we're so proper, we're, we're out for justice, we're out for blood and justice, outrage mob. Where are these guys? Because I don't see anybody. I mean, Kubrat Pulev landed more punches, he threw more punches, he was the aggressor, okay? By every single objective scoring criteria using the actual rules of the sport of boxing, he won that fight, okay? In Chisora's hometown. And of course, Chisora got the decision. You know, Chisora, who had the judges, the referee, the commentary team, the pundits, press row, and the crowd, everybody on his side, okay? The fight was essentially a setup, right? So, where's the outrage? That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the outrage. I, I, I don't see anything. I haven't heard one report about anybody in Chisora's family getting a death threat. You know, I haven't heard one report of any parliamentary investigation into, into match fixing. I haven't seen one thing. I've got a sneaking suspicion here that it depends who the fighter is, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's not just about, oh, gift decisions or hometown decisions or what you perceived to be a robbery, you know, because you don't know shit about boxing and whatever, like like what, what you perceive to be a hometown decision is, it's, it's not that that's wrong, it's not that that justifies an outrage, it's not that that justifies judges being reprimanded and whatnot, it just depends on who the fighter is, doesn't it? You know, it, <laughs> there's no consistent standard here, I mean, if it's Derek Chisora, you know, this thug from Zimbabwe who touches men up and kisses them against their will, if it's him getting a hometown decision, then that's perfectly fine. You know, we'll just sweep it under the carpet. You know, he's a nice guy. We we have a we have some sort of emotional connection to him, so that's fine. It's Chisora. You know, that's just it's just him being Chisora. Okay, it's all good. But if it's the dirty haggis munching, iron brew guzzling alcoholic Scott who gets a what you perceive to be a hometown decision, yeah, all of a sudden then it's a problem, isn't it? So let me stop rambling and let's address some of the criticism. So pretty much every time I make a video these days, and this is the thing too, look, 
I, I don't understand why a lot of you guys even subscribe to me. I don't understand why a lot of you guys even watch me because there are several long-time subscribers of mine who come into my comment section and all they ever do is moan, all they ever do is bitch, and it's as if they subscribe to me and they're clinging onto my channel despite the fact they don't really like what it is I have to say. And it's as if they're looking for some sort of validation, like they want me to agree with them on their perception that they have of their favourite fighter. It's as if that's what they're looking for from my channel, they're looking for some sort of confirmation bias. So look, if you're a Derek Chisora fan, be a Derek Chisora fan. I could give two shits if you're a Derek Chisora fan. If you want me to be a Derek Chisora fan, if you want me to pretend that Derek Chisora won the fight because it validates your delusion, it validates your fanboy connection that you have to him, that, look, that's, that's fine if you want to have that connection, if you want to watch his fights, you want to enjoy them, and you want to pretend like he won when he didn't, you can do that. But don't, don't come along to my channel and expect me to share your opinion. You know, don't come along here and accuse me of being this, that, and the other just because I won't simp for your favourite fighter. Okay, this, it's not going to happen here, right? So, again, there's people who subscribe to me, fans of individual fighters, who I don't really understand the thought process for why they even watch my content. I don't, I, I don't understand it. Why are you here? As I keep telling you guys, if you don't like what you're hearing from my channel, you don't have to watch. You, th there are plenty of channels out there who will tell you exactly what you want to hear. Okay, th th there's channels on this platform in the boxing community who have built their entire popularity, their entire fan base. They've built it on telling people what they want to hear, on placating to individual fan bases. There's plenty of channels out there that do that, and I've got no problem if you want to go and watch them. But you're not going to get that sort of validation from me, so look, those people, I'm sure they know who they are. Let's address some of the other criticisms I get. So, cr criticisms I regularly get on here, and it, it changes all the time. You know, it, it's different every bloody time these people come along. First of all, it's, I'm just a racist who hates black people, right? You know, that that's... That's the one I get quite often. You know, that, that's kind of died down a little bit in recent months, I think. But definitely for the longest time, that was one of the main criticisms. Another one that I've been hearing is that I'm an Eastern European fanboy. You know, I, ju I just support Eastern Europeans and I've got some sort of pathological need for there to be an Eastern European in charge or whatever. Like Again, that, that's just that, that's just something that subscribers of mine keep keep coming up with it's, it's it's one of them it sounds like a projection to me but for whatever for whatever reason that's something i keep hearing another one is that i'm a scottish nationalist who hates the british that, that that's another one that's a new one that's been popping up lately i'm a scottish scottish nationalist who hates the british and just loves to see the british fail yeah that that's why that's why i'm rooting for a a Bulgarian over a Zimbabwean, like, is, is that even a word, Zimbabwean, with whatever you call it, an African from Zimbabwe, right? It, <laughs> you consider Derek Chisora British, I mean, that that says a lot about you, doesn't it? But, I, again, that, that's a new one I've been getting, I'm a, I'm a Scottish nationalist who is anti-British and just, just wants all the British fighters to lose, you know? It, it's interesting that, because anybody who knows anything about me away from YouTube in my personal life, will know that I'm not a Scottish nationalist at all. In fact, I didn't even grow up in Scotland, and I support the Union, okay? So, again, the, the, let me not even get into that, okay? That, that's ridiculous. But yeah, that's one of the ones I get accused of. So, I had a bunch of people coming into the video, you know, and as, as you usually get, you know, because a lot of boxing fans nowadays, they, when they look at a fight and, and, and they see what's going on in that ring, what these people often do, I'm talking about these normie boxing fans, is they don't actually understand proper boxing scoring criteria. How these guys judge fights and how they score fights is they listen to the commentators and whatever the commentators tell them to think or, or whoever the commentators say won, you know, whatever, whatever the um, 
pattern of the fight was, the story of the fight, as Max Kellerman likes to call it, whatever that is, that's what they go with. So that's kind of a uh, running joke that some of us have had on here. But my point is, a lot of these boxing fans, these normie, casual boxing fans, they don't actually understand how to score a fight. They just look at the... They, they, they watch the fight, they enjoy the fight, and they listen to the commentary team, who often fall into groupthink. And whatever the commentary team... Like, whatever's the general consensus among the commentary team... You know, Derek Chisora's personal friend and former manager... Derek Chisora's other personal friend and former sparring partner, and Barry Jones, you know, <laughs> whatever they say is happening, the, these normie boxing fans will just go along with it, and they'll repeat the same narrative, right? So what was the narrative? The narrative that, that the commentators were trying to push, and what a lot of people were coming up with in my comment section, was Chisora was the aggressor. Really? Chisora was the aggressor? So... Okay, so explain to me. So, Chisora was the aggressor, right? Somehow, he was the aggressor when Kubrat Pulev threw more punches. Kubrat Pulev landed more punches. Kubrat Pulev did more damage legally with actual punches that were within the rules of boxing. Kubrat Pulev backed Chisora up to the ropes all night, right? Had him on the end of a jab. Had Chisora clinching, had Chisora running for dear life, had Chisora gasping for air, looking like he was going to collapse in the, final, in the final few rounds of the fight. Again, running for dear life in pure survival mode, looking like he was going to collapse. When the final bell rang, Derek Chisora slumped into the corner, gasping for oxygen like he was going to pass out. He was the aggressor, though. <laughs> so, again, Pulev threw more punches. Pulev landed more punches. Pulev did more legal damage. Pulev backed Chisora up to the ropes the vast majority of the fight. Chisora spent full rounds, particularly in the second half. He spent entire rounds of the fight on the ropes, getting hit, taking a beating, Gasping for oxygen, clinching, running, like, like, but, but he was the aggressor. Please, can, can somebody please make that make sense to me? It doesn't make any sense. Another thing I keep hearing now, I pointed out in my, in my review for the fight that both guys were clinching. Absolutely, there was clinching from both guys. Chisora was clinching like he always does in every single fight. And Pulev was clinching, you know, when he, when he had Chisora tackling him, trying to trying to run forward and shove his head in his face. Yeah, in those instances, Pulev was clinching. No shit. But the point is, one of the things that I was pointing out is that Derek Chisora does a lot of dirty things in his fights. Like, he'll throw rabbit punches, he'll hit you round the back, he'll hit you low, you know, he'll hit you on the break and the blind side of the ref, he'll hit you with the palm of the glove with the wrist, you know, he'll shove his head in your face, then hit you with a punch. You know, he, he does all that stuff in every fight. He's very, very dirty, very, very sneaky. And it's a very, very big part of his game. It's how Derek Chisora is able to fight guys who are so much better than him technically. You know, the likes of Usyk. And he's able to make these guys look awkward. You know, he's able to make these guys look uncoordinated. And the, the reason he's able to do it is because he's just breaking the rules. And if you're fighting at home... With a referee who's on your side, which is what Chisora always seems to have nowadays, you're gonna look great fighting like that. That that's why when Chisora was fighting in places like Germany and Finland and places like that, he looked atrocious. If you go and look at those fights, he looked absolutely atrocious in all of those fights. And that's because in those fights, you actually had a proper referee who was uh, on top of the fouling, you know, the referees in those fights weren't having any of his shit, you know, these continental European referees who actually understand the rules of boxing and weren't trying to control the outcome, they were just trying to do their job and enforce the rules of boxing as they should. But when Chisora fights in the UK, he looks a lot better, doesn't he? And the reason why is because he's allowed to do whatever he wants, okay, you know, he, he dropped... Joseph Parker in the first fight with a shot behind the head. 
and everybody went ballistic and started spunking up his back like it was the most amazing performance they'd ever seen. He lost that fight, by the way. And <laughs> so, yeah, my point is, Chisora was doing all these dirty things in the ring and I was pointing it out. And what these people were saying, I'm talking about the people in the comment section of my video claiming that Chisora won. They were saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter what Chisora was doing because Pulev was, was clinching. Right, Pulev was clinching too, so whatever numerous amounts of fouls that Chisora com committed in the fight, well, none of those none of those really matter, do they? Because Pulev did some clinching here and there. It's interesting to me because I recognise some of the names of the people who comment on my channel, and some people think I'm not paying attention, but sometimes I am. And I noticed that some of the same people who are saying this about Chisora are the same people who, when I pointed out that Jack Catterall was clinching non-stop against Josh Taylor in that fight, which he was, and I provided a film study with evidence showing that in every single round of that fight, Jack Catterall was initiating clinches, he was initiating headlocks, and he was spoiling and cheating his way through the fight. I, I proved that. I definitively proved it with, with video evidence. And... What, what people were responding to when I did that back at the time, because again, some of you guys think I'm not paying attention. I, I, very, I very much am, I can assure you. What the response was to that was, oh, it doesn't matter if, if Catterall's clinching because rabbit punches! You know, because Taylor threw rabbit punches and, and if you throw rabbit punches, then it doesn't matter if your opponent clinches, okay? What is he supposed to do? You know, that's what those people were saying. Those same people who are saying that the only reason that Chisora was, or, or what they're saying is that I should ignore all the rabbit punches and the and the shots around the back and to the kidneys and on the break and the low blows and the shots with the wrist and the slaps with the palm of the, of the glove. I should ignore all that because Pulev was clinching. <laughs> I mean, can you guys please have a standard? So, so it, it's, it, Josh Taylor's, fouls like supposedly you know he landed like three rabbit punches maybe in that fight something like that his his rabbit punches in that fight completely and utterly negate the consistent illegal headlocks and clinching that jack catterall was doing that entire fight i should i should ignore the clinching i should just write it off completely because rabbit punches rabbit punches do I mean, like I said, it, it really, it really just depends on the fighter, doesn't it, man? And <laughs> like I said, if it's the if it's the degenerate thug from Zimbabwe, you know, the woman beater who kisses other men and bites them in the ring and does all that dirty shit, you know, shows his ass in public and gyrates on other men and just just acts like an absolute weirdo, you know, spits water in people's face and. Just an absolute dirty creep of a guy. If it's that guy doing it, it's totally fine. Yeah, but if but if it's the Scott, then there's a problem, isn't there? You know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all the all the short bus riders in my comment section, man, trying to say that Chisora won this fight. You're all exposing yourselves because I tell you one thing, I'm gonna remember it. Alright, I, I never want to see any of you guys, right? all the guys I'm referring to here, who are saying that I should ignore the fouls and it wasn't Chisora's fault and this, that and the other, and Chisora won the fight because holding and because whatever. I'm going to remember this and I don't ever, I don't ever want to hear you guys ever complain about scoring in boxing again. If a fighter that you don't like gets a gift decision in his hometown or... If a fighter you support wins a fight clearly and gets robbed, I better hear the same response from you guys. I better see you guys say, oh, well, you know, it is what it is and, and, and come up with an excuse for it because I don't I don't ever want to hear you guys ever complain about a robbery again. And, and I'm talking to the people who are supporting this fight and, and, and supporting the uh, Chisora getting the win because you guys really exposed yourselves. So... That's all I have to say, really. I, I just thought I'd respond to some people. This was a not a very well-structured video, but, I mean, what else is new? This is kind of what I do now. I kind of just wing it, don't I? So, yeah, here's what it is, man. Double standards. Um, 
and absolutely pathetic, disgraceful bias from British boxing fans. What else is new? Okay, been been talking about it for the past like seven years on here. Like, well, what else can I say about it? Let me know what you guys think anyway. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. God bless.